Hi, it's Player Ban! Alright, we gotta deliver some jam! Hello, it's Junior for Hartford. Before you hang up, just hear me out. I have a business proposition. The simple matter is we both have the same problem that needs solving. Very well, we can meet tonight. Interesting. Ooh, a basket that's as big as me. All right, let's deliver. Okay. Sorry about yesterday. Roxy can be so annoying. But good news, no more boring chores for me today. Did you make it to the old Valentine Warehouse? So, what did you find? Give me the dirt. Something happened. There was someone else there. What? Who was it? Was it aliens? I knew it would be aliens. No. Zombies? No. Alien zombies? Uh, what else could it possibly be? Rolo, I've got to deliver these into town first. We can catch up later. Oh, is it a whole thing? It sounds like a whole thing. Yeah, we shouldn't talk about it here. Meet me at the treehouse tonight. I'm not sure what this treehouse is, uh, is that you speak of. <sighs> Meet me at Mission Control. Roger that, Space Cadet. D Rolo. So adorable. Hi everyone, welcome back to Beacon Pines. We uh we got started with some some fancy happy music right now. We gotta deliver these jams. I hope you guys are all doing well out there. I'm uh I'm doing okay myself. And I have no idea where I'm going in this game. But we're heading to town. Do, 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 do. Okay, okay. So Tolliver. Well actually, I know one of them is uh at the cafe up here. I just kinda don't remember where the other one is. Anchor from the past, mistakes not yet made. And a glimmering hope for the future. He carried them all in equal parts everywhere he went. Oh heavens, what a burden to bear. Alright, keep reading, Missy. Hello, how's your baby? Are these leaves here for a reason? Should I talk to you? Mr. Wilder, I trust you have time to chat. Eris Valentine, oldest of Sharper Valentine's children, and heir to the Valentine fortune. Oh wait, sorry, this is the... The fancy one. Had a way of making questions seem like demands. Certainly. What seems to be the problem? Mr. Wilder had learned to assume that if he was hearing from Eris, it was because she had taken issue with something he had put in the paper. I couldn't help but notice that the front paper of this morning's paper was consumed with stories about this silly festival. Well, yes. That is the news of the day. But there is no mention of the museum, nor the foundation through which it was endowed. I'm sorry, Miss Valentine. My readers are more so interested in this town's future, rather than any one family in particular. Mm, there was a time, Mr. Wilder, when the goings-on of my family was the only thing this town cared about. Well, things change, ma'am. And you know, change is a dangerous. If you finish that thought, I will make the monocle a permanent fixture of your anatomy. My apologies. Good day, Miss Valentine. Did I give you the impression this conversation is finished? Mr. Wilder averted his gaze and began to polish his monocle. Well, good day, Mr. Wilder. Jeez, Harris, gotta calm down, woman. I know business is important, but it can't be all about you. Hey, study bug. Hey, cool kids. Ugh, jeez, can't even walk through the door. What the? Oh, the 
cafes all the way down there. Ooh, boxes and a sign. Last chance, Dinah. All right. Gotta. Oh, little Dawn, we gotta say hi to her. Hey, Dawn. Oh. Hi, Luca. What's up? They got you and jam delivery, huh? Yup. Have you seen the new kid around yet? New kid? Yeah, came in from the big city. Her parents both got jobs here. But get this, one of them is working for William Kerr in Perennial Harvest. And the other is working for Harris Valentine. And the Valentines represent Beacon Pines Pass. Perennial Harvest has positioned itself as this town's future. Must make for some interesting dinner table conversations. I can imagine. Dawn is so cute. Last chance diner. Well, if it isn't my favorite little GM runner. Hey, Mrs. Fratelli. Look at she you. She leaned forward and pinched Luca's cheek. You're all skin and bones. Is your gram not feeding you? She is, it's just... I understand. You know, I taught your mama how to cook back in the day. You may not even remember, but you and her used to help me out in the diner. See that picture over there? That's you helping your mama back in the day. So cute, running around in your little apron, taking orders. Ugh, the whole situation just breaks my heart, what happened with Eleanor. I've got a feeling she's out there somewhere, you need to be with you again. Few things in this world can keep a mother from her son. Luca shifted the basket uncomfortably. Oh yes, let's see here. Mrs. Fratelli lifted the cloth and inspected the jam. Ah, they even have my name on them. How thoughtful. She carefully lifted out her jars of jam. You tell your gram hello for me, Luca. Will it do? Alright. Is this the mayor? If I could just be left alone, young Mr. Van Horn. Oh, sure. Sorry to bother you. It's just that... Mr. Kerr has asked me to make the opening speech at the festival. Being mayor and all, you might expect me to be a charismatic speaker. <laughs> Lucas stays. he's like, uh, yeah, I definitely don't. The truth is, I'm terribly nervous. I really don't think I'm cut out for this sort of thing. Cut out for being mayor or for public speaking? Both, I suppose. I never really chose any of this. It's more of a duty to my family. For our legacy. That sounds like a heavy burden. As for the festival, just speak from your heart. I'm sure it'll be great. Take words from the wise kid, Mr. Mayor. Alright, we gotta deliver, uh... Okay, where are you gotta deliver? Mr. Tolliver. I kinda forgot where he works, though. Do, do, do. I guess we'll just, uh... Are you was you're not wait, yeah, are you Miss Okay, you're not Mr. Oliver. Okay. <laughs> oh, there he is. Oh, hello. How do you keep the ice cream cold? We keep them on ice? Where do you get the ice cream from? I don't know, somewhere cold? How do they keep somewhere cold cold? Look, Bert, do you want ice cream or not? No, I'm good. <laughs> Oh, Bert. Huddled at his counter, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining apples. More accurately, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining one apple. Hello? With Ew. a yelp, Mr. Tolliver fumbled the apple, flailing at the air as it fell. Oh, sorry. Oh, no bother, no bother. He leaned forward and lowered his voice. I see you have something for me. Yeah, Grant had some gem I'm supposed to give you. He leaned in a bit further. A uh, gem? Uh, yeah, these ones on top. She wrote your name on them. Mr. Tolliver leaned back, speaking loud enough for anyone to hear. Ah, yes, the gem. 
Thank you so much for delivering this jam to me. He reached forward and snapped up the jars of jam, giving Luca a little wink. I shall put it on my store shelves. Post haste. These jams. Wink, not secret note. Okay, I should finish my deliveries. Uh -huh. Of course. Of course. He leaned in for a final whisper. Of course. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, Mr. Tolliver, you goofball. Okay, hold on a second, guys. I'm just gonna... Change his little... There you go. Just talking a little loud. Okay. Now I gotta... I gotta deliver the last uh, jams to Mr. Nuncreed here. Who has a crush on my grandma. I got some jam for you, Mr. Nuncreed. Luca, you seem uh, chipper. Well, aside from being a delivery duty, it's a nice day. Mr. Nuncreed eyed Luca for a moment. Then nodded in agreement. I suppose it is. So, do you want your jam? Oh, right. Uh, usually Juniper drops those off herself. I guess she's busy today. Anyway, this is my last delivery for the day. Oh, in that case... Nuncreed snatched the basket from Luca. I'll hold on to the basket until the next time I see your gran. <laughs> That's his excuse for seeing her. Hey you, anchovies or pineapple? What? Don't think, just answer. Uh, pineapple? Why? How old are you? Twelve? Perfect, follow me. Who are you? Anyone ever tell ya you ask too many questions? Just try to keep up, okay? Beck, you run so fast! What just happened? Ugh. Oh, you run fast too, Luca. Where does she go? Oh. Hey, what a crazy coincidence. Here's my new friend I was just telling you about. Oh, that's wonderful. Yep, we just hit it off. Oh, really? Get this, his favorite pizza topping in the whole world is pineapple. Oh, um... And what is your new little friend's name? Beck locked eyes with Luca. The look on her face was equal parts expectant and desperate. Luca uh, Van Horn, nice to meet you. I'm Nelly, and this is Ilona. We're Beck's parents. Beck gave Luca a quick nudge. Oh yeah, but Beck told me all about you. Already feels like we know each other for years. So you can both stop obsessing me about making friends. Oh darling, we never doubted you. It's just that, for children with fewer than five close friends, the probability of a stunted development doubles. Well, one down, four to go, I guess. What Nelly means is that we just want this mood to be as easy on you as possible. You can relax. A friend has been friended. This calls for a celebration. Luca, you must join us for dinner tonight. A uh, dinner? Wow, another coincidence. I actually already asked him, and you say we'd love to. Uh, it's just... wonderful. In that case, we should pick up some groceries. You two don't get into too much trouble now. Beck just forced Luca to eat some dinner with her. Wow, I can't believe that worked. Thanks a ton. Uh, you welcome? I owe you one. My mom's a great and all, but they can be a bit much sometimes. Our house is a little cottage next to that big mansion place. Wait, you live on the Valentine Estate? Yeah, that's the spot. Meet me by their uh, big creepy gate. Don't be late, or I'm back to square one on this whole friend grift. <sighs> Great, see you then. Oh, so that little cute little house was their home. Alright. That shouldn't be too hard. I'm not forgetting anything, am I? Oh, hello. Uh, good morning, Jeff. What's so good about it? Another day further down the tubes, if you ask me. Uh, come on now, it's not all bad. 
The festival is coming up. I love the festival. Oh, man, Valentine used to put on cockamamie shindings all the time. And where did that get us? Well, it's uh, Perennial Harvest putting on this one. And they're doing, uh, doing it for the whole town. As far as I see it, the difference between the Valentine Company and this new Perennial Harvest Jeff outfit... dug through his pockets for a bit. ...is the difference between this empty soup can and this brown banana. But those are both garbage. Exactly. Well, I guess we found out what he thinks of all this. Oh my goodness. Time to say hello. Hey, Kato. Good afternoon, Luca. Can I help you find anything? Oh, uh, maybe, maybe not. Try me. Well, there's been some weird stuff going on at the old Valentine warehouse. Can't say I know anything about the warehouse. But empty hives don't stay empty for long. Huh? Kato motioned to the book in front of him. The more I read about bees, the more similarities I see with people. If a hive collapses and fails, it doesn't stay empty for long. A new queen will set up shop pretty quickly. So you're saying it would make sense for someone new to start using the warehouse? Nature abhors a vacuum. This kid is wise beyond his years. This little penguin, he's gonna be great one day. Hey, little guy. Hey, Chase. Oh, hey, Luca. Have you seen this new issue of Hank Atomic? Uh, not yet. No spoilers, please. It's awesome. It's a flashback. <sighs> no spoilers, please. We get to see how mild bearded Henry Adams becomes. Hank Atomic Man of Space Justice. Chase, no spoilers. Oh, sorry. My point is, you're gonna love it. <sighs> Alright, Chase, see you later. Roger that, Space Cadet. Aww. I love how they're all into space. They have like mission control as their uh, base treehouse place. All right. Do, 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 do. Okay, I think it's this way on this nice stony path. So, who all lives in my house? Harris and Gus Valentine grew up there. And Solomon moved in a few years back. The creepy little kid in the vest? Uh, that sounds like the one. So just three people live in a huge thing? I bet a bunch of sh shady stuff happens all the time in a place like that. Uh, not really. The Valentines pretty much keep to themselves. So it's empty and boring? Uh, pretty much. What a waste. My mom says it used to be way busier back before Sharper died. Before the foul harvest. Okay, that's like the fifth time someone's mentioned this foul harvest thing. And you all use the same ominous tone. Eventually, you're gonna explain to me how that harvest got all fouled up. But we can't keep my parents waiting anymore. This way. So we got Gus, Solomon, and Harris all living in there. Most kids would have just ditched me up by this point. Why are you still here? You look like you could use some help. You know what, Luca? You're not so bad. Let's get through this as simply as possible. Just eat, smile, and nod. Ugh, fun. Great. Whatever you do, don't bring up their work. I think I can handle that. Beck took a long breath, then gave a firm nod. Here goes nothing. Chapter 4 Dinner with the Moodwills Ilona Moodwill was worried about change. A gardener at heart, she understood the necessity of change relied on it, even. But there was a difference between the controlled world of her plants and this cluttered cottage in a strange town. Almost done. Nellie was a blur of activity, digging through boxes. Sorry, love. Couldn't find the dishes. We'll have to make do with paper plates. Dinner went by without much conversation. As she watched Beck and Luca finish up their pizza, Ilona let herself relax into the chair. The things she cared about were still here. Nellie finally had the job of her dreams. Beck was beginning to take root. Ilona's task was simply to tend to them. She could do that. Ilona, you sound like a very caring person. So Luca, tell us a bit about yourself. Where do you live? Oh, I live with my grandma. 
Over on the other side of the river. Your grandma? Where are your parents at? Uh, back, Manners. It's alright. My dad passed away in an accident at a fertilizer plant six years back. Oh dear. My mom's been uh, missing for a few months now. Like, missing missing? Lucas' eyes were fixed to his plate, pushing a chunk of pineapple around with his finger. Nelly was the one who eventually broke the silence. Luca, how did you like the pizza? Oh, it was good. Very good. Normally, we'd have put more effort into dinner. Ilona nervously gestured toward the boxes. Uh, we aren't fully settled in, and Beck had mentioned that it's your favorite. I'm sorry, are we just skipping the part where he said his mom was missing? Beck. I'm sorry, Luca. This move has us all a little tired. Luca wiped his face with his sleeve. No, it's fine. So Beck said she moved here for work. Beck gave Luca a swift kick under the table. Oh, uh, I mean, what brought you to Beacon Pines? Oh, you were right the first time. We're here for work. Nelly won't tell you this, but she's a brilliant chemist. I don't know about brilliant, but I do love it. She's brilliant. Perennial Harvest just made her their newest lead researcher of deep engineering. She makes it sound more impressive than it is. I'm just happy that I get to make a difference in the world. Perennial Harvest is at the forefront of evolving agriculture into something more useful than sparkling water and excrement on the ground. Luca glanced over to Beck. She seemed to be holding her breath. What Nelly means, Luca, is that there are different ways to grow plants. Yes, some people talk to their plants and hope for the best. And some people happily leave their job to allow a loved one to pursue their dream. You swore you didn't. Beck slammed her fist into the table, perhaps harder than she intended. Hey, Luca, how about some dessert? I actually have to meet my friend Rilder soon. Luca glanced outside to gauge the time. The sky was darker than he expected, filled with ominous clouds. Looks like there's a storm brewing. I should get going. Oh, I didn't think there was any rain in Almanac. Yeah, Almanacs aren't that useful around Luca here. Luca wiped his mouth one last time with his napkin and started to get up. Thank you for the pizza. It was really good. See you at the festival, Beck. Wait up. I'll walk you home. Surprised, Luca turned around. He knew Rollo could be prickly around new people. But Beck seemed cool. Rollo would warm up to her eventually. Probably. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him uh, as the clouds above began to break. Oh, like break as in it got brighter? Should we do that instead? Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to break, revealing patches of star-filled summer night. Moonlight filtered down, shimmering in the treetops. Sure, you can tell me to Rolo. You're not going home? No, I promised Rolo I'd tell him about- Luca stopped himself mid-sentence. Promise you tell him what? Spit it out, bub. We're thick as thieves now. If there's a juicy secret, you gotta tell me. Okay. You can come to the treehouse and I'll tell you what happened. Heck yeah. Nice. I wonder what happened if Luca we uh, saw chose Beck Rumble. Skulking by the gate. So you're telling me uh, there's something mysterious or creepy about this place? It's mostly boring and empty. I refuse to believe that. Big spiked gate, looming mansion. Rich reclusive owners. It even smells shady. Nick grabbed the wrought iron bars and shook the gate. Mark my words, you decadent nightmare house. You will reveal your secrets to me!
what did you do? Uh, first of all, I told you so. Second, hide. That's Harris Valentine. Who's that she's talking to? Shh. I expect you to return that suit in working order. Of course. As long as everything proceeds as planned, there's nothing to worry about. The only thing I'm worried about is what's rightfully mine. If that means making some unsavory alliances, so be it. I couldn't agree more. There comes a time to suspend hostilities. I'll deal with our common threat. Now this is what I'm talking about. Max's voice was an excited whisper. Proper shady stuff. Someone in the suits like that tried to grab me yesterday. Seriously? Shh. You do understand that when this all inevitably fails, I will deny everything? I wouldn't expect any less of you. You just worry about your part in this and let me handle the rest. I can't wait to see the look on the Wu Care's face. Yes, the truth will come to light. I'm still surprised you're so comfortable with the potential collateral change or damage. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that change is painful. Wow, I was expecting shady, but that's just flat out super villain talk. If you don't mind me asking, why? Why are you doing all of this? The mysterious figure retracted their mask, hair pushing out from all corners. Oh my, is that Gran? Family. A chill ran down Lucas' spine. His vision blurred. Beck stifled a sharp wince, and Luca looked down to see himself wrenching her hand. An answer I can certainly respect. Gran tussled her hair back under the face mask. Just remember, keep everything nice and normal until the festival. I don't need lessons in rousing suspicion. Gran gave Eris a curt nod and disappeared into the night. Oh my goodness. Gran is working? With the fertilizer company? Chapter 5 What big ears you have. Lucas sat shivering in the bushes, staring at his feet. After checking to make sure the coast was clear, Beck gave him a gentle tug on his sweater. Oh, dang. Uh, what's wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. Why were you so scared of that old lady in the hazmat suit? That was my gram. That was your gran? Yeah. Okay, well... I'm sure there's a perfectly reasonable explanation for all of this. Let's just get to the treehouse and figure things out there. Lead the way. Oh, dang. We just hit an interesting plop, like, point, or part in our story here, so we find out that there's some characters in hazmat suits. Maybe some of them are, are good, maybe some of them, are, I mean, we know some of them are bad, but are the other characters, like Gran, is she supposed to be like a good hazmat person? Or, you know, she's trying to be like a double agent or something? Like, I don't know, I'm trying to figure out what this whole thing about like the fertilizer company is like who's good is harris good is mr care good i don't know i guess we'll find out more of the secrets next time all right everyone i'm gonna stop here for today thank you so much for watching and i will see you the next time until then bye